Hey guys and what's up, welcome back to another video. So a lot of you guys have purchased Ryzen based laptops and I feel it's quite important for you guys to know about this awesome third party tool that is called as Ryzen controller. So Ryzen controller is an unofficial tool that allows you to tweak the performance of your AMD Ryzen mobile processor and it is compatible with Ryzen 2000, Ryzen 3000 and Ryzen 4000 mobile processors. And in this video, I will guide you through the various options inside of Ryzen controller and explain you what the various settings mean and when you should use them. So if you guys want to know more about Ryzen controller and the guys behind this awesome project and if you have used a Ryzen controller previously on a Ryzen 2000 series laptop, you will know how far this software has come. Anyways, you can visit their website link down below in the description. Now I cannot show you the effects of Ryzen controller in this video because I do not have access to a Ryzen based laptop right now. I am using this on an Intel laptop so the changes will obviously not work. And also remember guys, these options may or may not work on your Ryzen laptops. It's about trial and error. Few things may work and few may not. There are a lot of variables like power adapter, chassis design, the generation of Ryzen you are using or simply the quality of silicon you got. I had previously used Ryzen controller on a first generation Acer Nitro with Ryzen 5 2500U to boost the CPU TDP and most recently on the Dell G5 Special Edition when I stress tested the machine and showed how Ryzen controller dropped the temperatures and increased the performance. So using Ryzen controller is very easy. The first section of Ryzen controller is for the CPU. And these five settings collectively is what the developers call STAPM or Skin Temperature Aware Power Management, which is AMD's solution for keeping mobile devices at comfortable operating temperatures. It allows devices to boost to a higher power state for a short period of time before being throttled down to keep things cool to the touch. Now, different manufacturers use different STAPM configurations that you may or may not like. Now, Ryzen Controller allows you to modify these values to your preferences. After modifying these values, you can save them as a preset and apply whenever you want. So for example, you can create multiple presets like for gaming or for productivity or for saving battery life. So the options are pretty self-explanatory. First you have the temperature limit. So here you can set a maximum temperature limit for your CPU, beyond which your CPU will stop boosting and throttle down the clock speeds to keep the temperature below whatever limit you have set. Like in my G5 SE video, I set a temperature limit of 92 degrees centigrade which I thought was fair as the G5 SE has pretty powerful hardware and the system behaved accordingly to keep its temperatures below 92 degrees centigrade. Then there can be a situation where manufacturers actually set a low throttle limit which prevents the CPU from reaching its maximum clock speeds. So in that case, increasing the CPU throttle limit to something reasonable will increase the CPU performance by a lot. Next up, we have CPU TDP. This is one of the most important options as it allows you to change the TDP of your CPU and this option is particularly helpful to boost the performance of Ryzen U series APUs like Ryzen 5 2500U or 3700U or 4500U and so on. Normally they run at a TDP of 12 to 15 watts. But using Ryzen controller you can unlock the TDP and make them run at say 25 watts or 35 watts. Some laptops like the Nitro 5 2018 could run the Ryzen 5 2500U at 45 watts as it has a bigger chassis and beefier cooling than most thin and light laptops. Increasing the TDP in Ryzen 2000 and 3000 series chips provides a big boost in performance and also for Ryzen 4000U series. But in case of Ryzen 4008 series due to Zen 2's lower power requirements boosting TDP beyond 45 watts barely make any difference so it's not worth the extra heat output. Yes guys, remember, this is not some magical performance boost. It's bounded by the laws of physics. As higher the TDP, more will be the heat output. So be careful when pushing things too far. Always monitor your temps and run benchmarks to test the stability. I have made a video showing how to set up monitoring tools and conduct benchmarks, so do check it out. Then we have long boost TDP and long boost duration. Here basically you can set up the TDP for a long term workload, for example you are doing some rendering or any CPU intensive work that will be going on for a longer duration. You can specify the TDP that you want your CPU to maintain for this particular long workload. And the long duration option allows you to specify how long you want the long boost TDP to last. This is the time in seconds by the way. Now beware, don't set unreasonable TDPs like 50 watts in long term TDP option. Most Ryzen laptops cannot maintain such high TDPs over a long period of time. Most Ryzen 4008 series CPUs can maintain like 50 watts in a CPU only test for like a minute at max. And also Ryzen 4008 series benefits very less from high TDPs like I mentioned earlier. Last but not least, we have the opposite option. That is short term TDP and short boost duration. Now this option is quite a bit more practical than long boost TDP. So here you can set the TDP that you want your Ryzen CPU to boost for a short burst. For example, you are opening a huge spreadsheet of like 100 megabytes with a lot of calculations and numbers. So when opening that file, the CPU will boost to a high TDP for a few seconds and complete the short term workload faster. 
and short term duration is the duration you want your cpu to maintain that short boost tdp time in seconds once again you can set tdps like 30 watts for ryzen 4000u series chip or 54 watt for ryzen 4000h series chips moving on to the right pane you have options for your integrated vega graphics so these settings coupled with the CPU TDP in the previous section can really push the abilities of your integrated Vega GPU. So these options like minimum and maximum Vega iGPU clock speed and minimum and maximum infinity fabric frequency will help you gain a lot of extra performance from your Vega GPU and this is very helpful for those Ryzen laptops without a dedicated Nvidia or Radeon GPU. Those laptops will gain a substantial boost in gaming performance. And those who don't know what Infinity Fabric is, it is basically the interconnection between all the components on a Ryzen CPU die itself. Now in the power section, we have options for VRM current and PSI0 current limit. Now I don't have much idea on the PSI0 component on the motherboard. If anyone knows, please educate me in the comment section. As for the VRM current option, this allows you to precisely specify how much voltage you want the VRMs to supply to the CPU. Now I normally don't touch this option because it involves trial and error, leave it on auto. Now in the preset sections you have your various created presets ready for you to apply or modify. You can also choose when you want to auto apply a specific preset. For example I have created these 3 presets and I can apply this game mode when the laptop is plugged in or auto apply this power saver mode when the laptop is unplugged. And lastly inside of settings you have some nice options like the ability to launch Ryzen controller on starting the computer or launching it minimized or minimizing it to the tray instead of the taskbar. So yeah, that's all about Ryzen controller, try your own configurations, benchmark your system. Remember guys, Ryzen controller may behave differently on different systems. There are a lot of variables like I mentioned earlier. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.